Good morning and good afternoon. We're here for another board game review and playthrough. Today, we're doing the Australian game Squatter. Uh, it doesn't really play like any other game out in the market. It, uh, it's quite unique. It, uh, let me put that down there. It's very accurate, for one. Uh, and it sounds better than it, no, it plays better, sorry, than it sounds. The aim is to basically get the most amount of sheep and to basically improve your pastures. So uh, fill, you, want, you want to fill up your farm with as many sheep as you can fit in your farm, essentially. Pretty much. And whoever does that at the end of the game, whoever's got the maximum amount of sheep in the fully upgraded pastures wins the game. And again, as Nathan has just said, it is a lot more fun than that description yes, it's, it's, sounds. It's, yes, it, it is a lot more fun. Um... Like I said, it doesn't really play like much else at the market. Something, it, I guess, it looks a little like Monopoly, but you don't really... It's, it's really nothing like Monopoly, <clears throat> yeah. No, it's, it's very unique, so... Um, and as you said before, it is quite accurate. Um, and what we mean by that is it's accurate to, like, a farmer's life. You, you're obviously trying to expand your farm. Um, things happen throughout the game yeah. that a farmer would actually face. So drought and, you know, uh, fly infections and, and yeah. broken fences and whatever else sort of pops up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually very easy to play. <clears throat> Once you obviously get your money and all your sort of things set up, it's basically just roll the dice and follow the... Uh, Follow the steps of the space you land on. Yeah, and then there's all different cards and things that lead you in different directions, basically. So, I mean, we'll explain a little bit more in detail about the primary sort of function, which is the stock sales and the, the purchasing and selling of sheep. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean... Yeah, how about we get it out of the box and we'll take a look at what's inside and we'll go from there. Okay, so the first part that we have, of course, is our board. I'll just give you a bit of a look at that. Just to give you an idea of some of the spaces and things you can land on, just along the bottom there. Um, so it's all the way around the edges, there are your, where you move around. You've also got stations, so that is essentially where you store your sheep. So each person gets their own little station. And the stations are actually, I believe, based off real sheep stations, the names. Yes, yeah, so I mean this one for example is Warrenboo Station, so I think that actually does exist somewhere. Um, and in the middle of the board, we've of course got the name Squatter in the picture of the farmer with his sheep. And of course, later on, we'll just go through what some of the spaces do. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do that after. I'm just going to take a look at the other pieces and cards first. Okay, so let's have a look at all of our cards. As you can kind of see around the edges here, there are quite a few different ones. Uh, so the first thing we'll take a look at is just the playing pieces. They're... Pretty standard. Uh, there are a lot of different releases of Squatter though. Some of them have small little playing pieces and others actually have uh, molded plastic little farmers. farmers. Yeah, who are wearing their hats and you know, little shirts and everything. They're actually quite detailed, but sadly we don't have that version here. It came out in the, um, what, 1960... 66 or 64, so it's quite an old game. It is, and, and, and it's, I think I've probably seen at least 10 different versions of it. Nin 1960, it says in the manual. Okay, there you go. So it is quite an old game. Um, yeah, so all the different versions do tend to have different pieces. The only other real difference between the releases are the box uh, boxes themselves, and also just some of the colours of the cards and the spaces on the board. And but it's not, I'm, I'm positive, my wife's not quite sure about this, but I'm positive I've seen other releases that have slightly tweaked rules. But I have never seen but, different I mean, rules, it, so it, I don't know about that one. It, it, it really hasn't changed too much since, you know, 50, 60 years ago. No, so even when the colours of the cards vary, the cards themselves don't. No. Uh, now, our very important little items here are our sheep. Now there is a lot of those, you can see by this bag here, of sheep. And there is a reason why there are so many sheep. Well, this is uh, for two to six players. Um, and for, we'll show you later on the board, but for all the different pens, you have a certain amount of sheep. So if you do have six players, you need a lot of sheep. <laughs> um, so there they are, they're actually quite nice. They've got little sheep heads. Um, they're not as nice in all of the versions though. I think some of them are just literally just sort of cream tokens. I don't even have sheep heads. Yeah, so some of them are just kind of like the bases of these. Just that. Alright, so just a quick look through our cards. We've got these blue ones, which are Control of Weeds and Insects. 
fertilized pasture and worm control. So these are cards basically you get when you land on certain spaces when you pay for whatever it may be. So weeds, for example. And as you can read on the bottom, uh, it increases the value of your next stock sale by 20%, which um, we'll kind of go through later. And there, there's both sense. good and bad. I think some of them actually detract from your final sale price. Yeah, some, some make it harder, some make it better. So, yeah. Um, next thing we've got are haystack cards. Uh, in some of the different versions, you actually have a little mini haystack, but this version is obviously just the cards. Um, so they can actually help you with fires and things like that. So we'll go through that a bit after. We've got irrigated pasture cards, which are some of the pastures you have to upgrade your just normal farm to later on. Then we've got improved pastures. So again, same so sort of thing. Th there's actually three levels of pastures. There are. So you go from the one you start on, which is just the regular one, to the improved, to the irrigated there. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay to upgrade those. So money can be a real issue in this game. We've got stud rams, and there's a few different ones there. And they can help you improve the money you get uh, every time you go to a wool sale, which is how you make your money in yeah, this they, game. Yeah, they increase it by, what, 10% or 20% or something? Uh, total. 10, I believe. Um, but you do have to... Oh, we've just been uh, attacked by a giant cat. Can be noodles. You um, yeah, so they do improve. Um, you have to pay for those, and they improve by that 10%, I think when you go past, go essentially And you is. can actually lose them, they can die if you yes. land on certain spaces. Yes, so your stud ram can die, so you really want those, they're great. Of course we have the standard money, big wad of cash. Then we have tucker bag cards, uh, which if you land on a certain space on the board, you get to pick one of these up. It's basically a chance for a community chest. Yeah, that, that type of thing. Some of them are fantastic, like this one, which says you've got some nice rains, and it breaks drought, which is good. Uh, you'll see when we have a playthrough later that drought is terrible. Um, some of them here are not so good. They might kill your sheep, take your money away, things like that. And uh, last card is the stock sale. Um, so these are basically how you buy or maybe sell, if you need to, your sheep. And they determine your prices. So there's a buy price and a sell price. Now you don't get to see which one you're getting because they are this way on the game board. So you pick up a random one and whatever you get, however many sheep you've decided to buy, you'd be paying $480. Or if you're selling, this is how much you'd be selling them for. So that is all of the pieces aside from one more thing I'll just grab. This is the Ready Reckoner for Squatter. This basically determines everything really for the game for you. So this is, say you've got a bill to pay to fumigate or deworm your sheep. This can help you work out how much you need to pay the number of pens of uh, sheep you've got and how much you need to pay per sheep. Now this looks overwhelming at first. But there's very little calculations you need to actually do. It actually sort of calculates it, most. It does it all for you, just here. So it's just a little chart. Then you've got your wool sale chart. Now that determines how much money you get when you go to your wool sale. And that's based on how many pens of sheep you have. Now basically... And how many stud rams. As, as Laura's sort of mentioning, a wool sale is basically equivalent of passing go. So you complete one lap of the board. And then depending on how many sheep you have and other sort of factors and cards, you get uh, uh, X amount of money. Yeah. Which hopefully as the game progresses will actually steadily increase every time you go around because you should have more sheep. Exactly. And the last thing I'll just show you which is on the back of what I was just looking at is the stock sale page. So again, you don't have to work this out for yourself. Say you're buying five sheep and your cost was 440 you know exactly how much you need to pay or how much the bank gives you to buy them off you. So yeah, that, that is all the equipment and things. Okay, so just a quick look at some of the board spaces that play an important role in the game. First one we have here is not only our start space, but also our wall sale. And that means every time you come around this corner of the board or land on it, you get your proceeds, as it says there. And that is an amount of money based on how many sheep you have and if you've got any stud rams. So the more sheep, the more stud rams, the more money you get. Moving just down here, we've got our stock sale space. Now that's a spot and there's lots of those around the board. There's another one there. 
and another one there and they're all around uh, that's the spot where you get to buy or sell your sheep with those stock sale cards moving along there's quite a few spaces like this that are all something slightly different where you might have to pay a certain amount per pen of sheep um, obviously you want those early in the game if you're going to land on them not later on and again this type of space is all around the board so there's shearing costs over here oh there's jet sheep there uh, now you may have seen next to the sheep dripping spot is the stud ram space and again these are all around the board there's one for each type of stud ram so you can purchase those for the price and then if anyone else lands on your stud they pay the fee and you get a card to show that you've got those uh, next space along here is the tucker bag now that space allows you to pick up a tucker bag card and as I mentioned, they can have either good or bad things. Some of them are really quite complicated. Some of them are pretty simple. Here we have board dries up. Uh, I won't really go too much into that just the moment, but it's not a good spot. Um, we also have a lose one throw space there. What else? Um, so another type we have, these are the ones that you get those cards for that I showed in the intro. Uh, and again, you pay a certain amount and you get the control program, which can help to increase your selling price. If you're not planning on selling, though, that's not really useful. <laughs> um, all right. So that's the main sort of spaces for this side of the board. I'll just go back around here. Now. You may have seen what well, I was talking about wool sale, this local drought space. This is not good. When you land on this, you actually have to sell half of your sheep and then place a little token here, do a full circuit of the whole board, come all the way back around before you can buy any more sheep. Um, there's two of these spaces, one here and one on the opposite corner over there, and they are an absolute nightmare. Um, now, the reason why I didn't talk about that board dries up before is that's basically the same thing as a drought, but it only affects sheep that are on these blue pastures after you've upgraded and come all the way here. Um, the other thing, just quickly, is the haymaking season here. You can buy a hay bale, and I'd recommend doing so if you are ever playing squatter, because it means that instead of when you sell your sheep here only getting $500 per sheep, you can actually pick up a stock sale card and sell them for the sell price which are usually higher than the $500 but again it depends on whether they're on the natural pastures where you start or if you've improved or irrigated them uh, last sort of different space I'll show you is the stud ram dye space and that's basically for well you lose your stud ram if you've got one actually I just realized that won't be the last one when you are on drought, you can avoid doing that full circle of the board if you land on local rain. Or there's a couple of cards in that uh, tucker bag pile that can break your drought as well. And they're the ones you really want to get if you are on drought so that you can start buying those sheep sooner. Okay, now here we have just one of the stations. There are six, one for each player. And they all have different names. So this one is Mount Mitchell Station. At the top here is where you start. So you start with three sheep in each of the little orange sections. That's your natural pasture. What you want to do is then you pay to upgrade to your improved pasture, which is the green. And then you can have five sheep in each pasture. Ultimately, what you want to do is end up on these blue irrigated pastures. You have six sheep in each section. And again, you pay to upgrade to those. And that's when you win the game, when you fill up all of your uh, five irrigated pastures with six sheep in each. All right, we're all set up. So we've got all our sheep on our, uh, what was what's the first pasture called? Just uh, natural. Natural it's pastures. Just a, your basic paddocks, basically. Pretty much, they can hold three sheep each. The uh, second one. Cards are out. I've already covered the. Already covered the, yeah. yeah. I was away for that bit, how I was feeding our son. Yes. We've got our money each. Money, yep. Got our cards, haystack, uh, the tote, well, the cards. Pastures. Yep. We've got our guide uh, to help us do all our mathematic parts of it when we buy or sell sheep. And we have the manual here because it looks better in the uh, shop than not having it in there, even though we know how to play. Yeah. All right. So.
so we're just basically going to start. Um, this can be a really long game depending on really where you land, if you get droughts, all that kind of thing. Um, so we won't show you the full thing. We'll kind of jump ahead through to kind of more interesting parts. So who's going to It actually first? said uh, the usual playing time ranges from one hour to two and a half hours. Yeah, so this video is not going to be that long, don't worry. Uh, I, it, it actually plays a little like more Monopoly in terms of time spent playing. It can go on forever. Yes, it certainly can. As I said, I mean, sometimes you'll just go to drought, you lose sheep, you got to buy more, and yada, off you go. Yada, yada, yada. Exactly. Alright. you go. So you go first, or do you want to no, go no, first? No, no, just go. So Nathan is the yellow, and I am the blue. It's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tucker bag. Oh, I actually forgot. Um, you were meant to put the firefighting equipment card on the top of the tucker bag pile, and I didn't do that. We'll know that for next time. That's embarrassing. We'll just go ahead playing as we are, but yeah, that is meant and to be And you've explained there. what the firefighting equipment no, does. No, uh, the firefighting equipment does help if you have a fire on your property, which comes up also in those tucker It's bags. basically like in, um, if you played Game of Life, buying like a house insurance or yeah. car insurance. Yeah, it's insurance. Yeah. Basically. Alright, so Tucker Bag, you have increased the average fleece weight by selective breeding and good management. Receive a bonus of 1000 when you pass next wool sale. Return this card to the bottom of the stack after the benefit has been gained. So, basically this card, you keep with you. Once you pass sort of around the board one whole time, you get back here, you get an extra thousand dollars on top of whatever else you've earned from how from many all your sheep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just to mention that some of the cards you do use straight away, and others like that one you hold on to. So it's my go. Come on, Miss Drought. Seven. seven. Oops, I'm back there. Three, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, I'm visiting town, so I miss one turn. That's actually a double space there. Yippee! Woo could you please move me nine, good madam? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, a stud ram. And what's his name? This one here for you is Lachlan Lad. Uh, now, as we mentioned, they basically increase the money you get every time you go past for your wool sale. So and I think these are actually based off breeds of ram, the names, aren't they? Uh, possibly. I'm not sure on that one. Lachlan Lad. Um, so, that's $500 to buy those. Now, if I land on that one, I think I mentioned this as well, I have to pay a stud fee of $50. Yeah. He's a stud, all right. My I turn again. I lost a turn, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another tucker bag. Woohoo! High stock prices ruling. Increase your selling price or your buying price at next stock sale by 20%. And it's yet another one where you keep the card for future reference. So that's a very handy card because... Well, it can be because you don't actually want to increase your buying price um, because you don't want to have to pay more. So the smart thing actually to do generally with that card, if you land on a stock sale, is sell some sheep so that you get more money back for that one or multiple sheep rather than spending more on buying a sheep. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, just it's something interesting. The game is very strategic um, in that way. Come on, there's a drought space with your name on it. Well, I hope not. One, two, three. So I've actually landed on flood damage. I have to pay $1,000. You don't actually start with that much money, do you? I think you start with a couple uh, of thousand at most. It's, yeah, like 2200 or something, roughly. Mm. So, $1,000 straight up is not good. And doubles do nothing, I think, do they? Yeah, no, no, you One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stock sale. So, because I'm very ruthless in this game, and because I have the car which says I can increase my selling price for 20%, I'm going to sell all my sheep. Fabulous. So that's when this comes in handy. Uh, so what you will do is pick up your stock sale card. Yes, I'm pick I've picked it up. No, no, your stock sale card. Oh yes, that's the. Uh... <sighs> so bear in mind, we've played this many times, and Nathan has still forgotten what's going on. <laughs> well, you said stock sales, and it's card. Oh, I'm showing this on camera. So stock sales, seller. Uh, have you shown them the cards? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So basically, that's the buying and selling price, depending on how many you've got and if you've got ir ir irrigated or improved pastures. Since I've got natural pasture, price per pen is $690 per sheep. Okay, so I'm just going to show this um, as though you haven't got your extra percent mm -hmm. there. Um, so what you would do is you go to selling 15 sheep at how much? 690 was it? 690 Go to 690 that would be 
$10,350 from the bank. And then of course you can add on your 10 uh, or 20, sorry, percent yourself with the calculator. So we'll just might jump ahead to after we've done that rather than you watching us count out money. Look at this boy. It's your turn. All right. Okay, so Nathan has his Ooh. money, and they do actually have ten thousand dollar notes, which is kind of cool. This is only part of my money. Obviously, it was about twelve thousand or something. I got. No, but oh well, yeah. With when my you twenty percent, so um, put that card back under. Yeah, pop your card back, and as you can see, Nathan now has no sheep. Um, I play a little bit differently, so my first kind of aim generally is to just do my pastures and buy my sheep. So my go. Oh, I should probably roll both die. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Stock sale. I haven't upgraded any of my pastures. So at the moment, all I've got is my natural pasture and it's full. So I can't do a damn you can't, thing. You can sell, but obviously, like you said, you don't really like selling. That's not so. my sort of uh, game plan. So you'll go. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Stock sale. Um, I'm going to fill up my pens again. Okay. So 15 sheep. Yes. At 15 what sheep price? at... Four hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, we sold for six ninety, buying for four fifty. More actually, because of the twenty percent. Wow, that's true. So again, you just come back to this. Uh, Fifteen sheep at four fifty is six thousand seven hundred and fifty. So you made a profit of like four or five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Again, I think we'll just jump ahead because it takes a while to get those darn sheep out and count them through. Hmm. Well, all, all right, I'm back. As you can see, my little sheepies have all come back. Um, so obviously since I've made a little bit of money off that, my next step would be to buy the improved pastures and then I can store more sheep, get more money by passing wool sale, yada, yada, yada. And of course you've got a stud ram, so that's always nice. And I get a thousand dollars extra when I pass wool sale. Because of that tucker bag that you had. So we're going to just play through a little bit and we'll stop by in later and see how much you are landing on trout. We'll Her just cut to basically all the important points as yeah. we play through. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, so this is the local drought that we've been dreading. A uh, couple of things I need to do. One is put my little blue marker down on the local drought because I have to do a full circle of the board and come back past here before I can buy any more sheep. Good for me. It is good for you, not so much for me. The and second thing <laughs> I need to do, I have to, and I have no choice in this, sell half of my sheep. Now, um, I've got 15 sheep, you have to round up, so you have to sell 8. Now, does that, if you've got the, um, what's the top pasture, irrigated, does that, I think... Yeah, so droughts only affect your natural and your uh, improved pastures, not your irrigated. But I'm still on my natural ones, so there go 8 sheep. Now, uh, I don't have a haystack, I haven't bought one yet, which means I only get $500 per sheep. I can't use the stock sale card and possibly get more. more. <sighs> there go my sheep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so first of all, I'll obviously calculate my, how much I'll so so look, look at my stock card. It's on the back for the wool sale, so you need to turn that one around. And I've got 5, 10, 15, 18 sheep, one stud ram, um, and nothing really else to improve it. So 18 sheep, one stud ram, that's $4,950 I get for passing wool. But you also landed on, you can lift up your piece, sheep dipping, which is $10 per pen of sheep. So you've got to pay $180 because you've got 18 pens. So, let's get that money going. Don't get a two. Well, a two would give me spray for weeds and insects. Don't get a three. <laughs> Ooh. One, two, three. Ugh. And I just gotten back around. Hey, oh. Laura. Laura, did I say not get a three? So, I've got to sell another half of my sheep. Let's see and that. again, I have to round up, so that's four. Oh. No. Bye bye, black sheep. Happy when you wool. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, local rain. Uh, local rain actually breaks the local drought that I just landed on. That's awesome. 
What, why are you cheating so much? I don't understand. It never happens. I, I can't believe I landed on that. Well, I suppose you did land on local drought twice, which was pretty hilarious. But... Yeah, I think I deserve that local rain. So now I don't have to complete the circuit. I get to take that little token off. Oh, there goes our cat. She's just destroyed the board. Um, so now I don't have to do a full circle. Next time I land on stock sale, I can start restocking my sheep. I'm sorry to say, good Laura, but uh, I believe I have enough money to buy my rest of my irrigated pastures. So I'll take my last three, thank you. You only need two. Well, there they oh, are. Yes. Move your sheep down. Ma, ma. All right, so I just need, uh, ooh. How many more sheep? 10? Something like that, yeah. Not, not too many more. Hopefully, All right. hmm. All right, roll the die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You are kidding. Let's see. I'm going to buy ten sheep. <sighs> and I'm going to buy them at $440 per pen. Thank oh, you. Great. I believe I have enough money for that, Laura. So should we just show me moving my sheep across to the irrigated pastures to a better life? One, that's three. That's four, it. Rub it in. Five. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, how many sheep is in each pen, Laura? Six, and you got all your irrigated pastures. You had like the luckiest ga uh, game ever. But how many sheep do you have? Can we just see how many sheep you've got? Do we have to? I never got any more sheep. <laughs> Is it because you kept getting fees and fees? Nathan did that so fast. He basically, after you saw him like sell all his sheep, he just bought all his pastures and it was done. Let's just, here, come over here. Come, come over here. He's stealing my sheep now. Come over here. There we go. Seriously, that is the luckiest game for you ever. Mm. I got a couple of droughts, a flood. I just I had a stud ram die. I just... So that's about standard for you, isn't it? Anyway, that's a uh, squatter. If you can find it, great game to play. It is actually a really good game. Um, we've obviously only showed a kind of a, a really short version today because we've been sitting here for an hour and 20 minutes playing this. <laughs> um, and I don't think anyone wants to watch all of that. So yeah, it's a good game. Um, lots of different cards and things that you didn't see us get to sort of go through because we didn't either didn't pick them up or it was just going to be too long. Um, but yeah, check Squatter out. If you can find it in your country. I don't know if we can find it out Yeah, out it, it is a very Aussie game. And it's very expensive. Uh, some of them are, yeah. So yeah, that's Squatter. Oh, and by the way, um, we have the scan of the manual down in the uh, comment, uh, in the description. So just down below, if you need a copy of the instructions, that'll be down there. And check out our other videos. We'll be doing more board game reviews and playthroughs. Yeah, something just to mention, actually, um, if you like this video, give us a like, a thumbs up, so that we know you like it and you know you want to see more things like this. And uh, we will have at least one video every week, either board games. Check out our other videos. Bye. Ta-da.